In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve a proportion. Now, a proportion is basically a rate, such as in this example here, Jimmy makes $5 for every seven boxes of cookies that he sells. So that's a rate. So the proportion side would be how much money would he make if he sold 21 boxes? And N would stand for how much money would he make if he sold 21 boxes? Now, there are many techniques to solve for this proportion, and I don't want to discredit the equation technique because it's very useful when you're going to do algebra. But it's, it's not that easy and the numbers could get quite big, but let me just show you how that would work. We would use cross products in this case where you would multiply 7 times n, and that would be 7n, and 21 times 5 is 105. So we would solve that like a regular equation where we would divide both sides by 7, these sevens would cancel out and 7 into 105 is 15 but that's not the easiest way to solve a proportion so I'm gonna show you an easier way okay so I have my previous equation of Jimmy makes five dollars for every seven boxes of cookies he sells how much will he make, and again that's going to be N, how much will he make if he sells 21 boxes? So, this technique is called again the EZZ. And let's go to step one. Step one, always divide smaller number across into larger number. Drawing an arrow is helpful. So let's go back to the proportion and see how that works. Okay, so step one said we're going to divide smaller number, which is the 7, into the larger number, which is the 21. And the hint said to draw an arrow. The reason why we want to draw an arrow is we want to show which direction our z is going to take so we can actually follow the steps. So I'm going to draw the arrow and 7 divided into 21 is 3. Let's go to step two. Step two, multiply the answer that we had from dividing diagonally with the remaining number. Let's go back to the proportion and see how that works. So we already divided seven into 21, which is three. So now we're gonna follow step two, and that is multiplying the three, the answer we got from dividing, and notice how this is gonna make part of this Z. Well, it looks like a backward Z. We're going to multiply 3 times 5. And 3 times 5 is... 15! Great job! So the easy Z part of this proportion is where if we draw the arrows, the line goes across, the line goes diagonally, and the line goes here to our answer, which is 15. No, it doesn't look like a Z, maybe a backward Z. So let me show you where it does look like a Z. So let's take a look at this proportion. We have 5 ninths equals 25 over N. And we're going to do what step 1 said, and that was to divide the smaller number, 5, into 25. Now we're going to do that across, and notice we have to start at the top here because we can't do this at the bottom since our variable is at the bottom, and we can't do any dividing with a variable. So we're going to draw our arrow again like we said in step 1. 5 into 25 is 5. And step 2 said we're going to take our answer and multiply that diagonally by the remaining number. And 5 times 9 is... 45! Great job! So the reason why I call this the easy Z way is if we follow the arrows, 5 divided into 25 was 5. 
we multiplied the 5 times 9 and got 45 and that would equal what our variable is which was 45. Now I know what you might be thinking. You might be asking, well what if we cannot multiply diagonally? Well let me show you how that works. Like we did in the original step one of the other proportion, after we divide 4 into 16 is 4, we can't do step 2 because step 2 said we were supposed to take our answer and multiply that diagonally and we cannot do that because the variable is there. And this is what I call the roadblock method. I called this the roadblock method because our path was supposed to take us from 4 multiplying it diagonally by the variable here, but the variable is blocking the road. So we have to go around the roadblock. So this is the method that I call the roadblock method or the divide twice method. Instead of multiplying the 4, and we can't because the variable is there, we will take our answer, 4 into 16, which was 4, and we will actually divide it into the third or remaining number. And 4 into 12 is... 3! Beautiful job. Thanks for watching.